if you guys know something. 1990, North Pole. 1990, North Pole. Moving at about a very slow rate in the 90s. Very, very slow rate, very consistent rate. And that began to change. Um, the North Pole, as it moves, satellites, GPS satellites have to be adjusted as it moves. When GPS came out, they were adjusting GPS systems probably about, uh, I'm going to give an estimate. Now I have the readings on the other ones, but back in the 90s when it first came out. Actually, it was before then, but their adjustments were every few years. They had to make some adjustments. That changed. In fact, the frequency of adjustment I became more and more because the North Pole was moving uh, far too much, right? We all know that. We can see that in the uh, weather. How the weather is right now, we can, we can see how it's affecting everything. But it wasn't that bad, right? It wasn't that bad. So as they, they, they adjusted satellites probably about... Because 1990, the North Pole was moving about nine miles per year. That's not too much. Nine miles per year. Right? 2,000 comes. Those adjustments, huh? they really wreaked havoc on GPS satellites. In fact, in 2020, right? 1990, it was nine miles per year. 2020, it was 40 miles per year. The North Pole went from moving 9 miles per year in 1990 to moving 40 miles per year in 2020. See an increase? Yes. GPS systems were updated probably about every five years um, because of the movement of the North Pole. 2020 GPS systems were updated every five months. So it went from five years to five months, the updates, or the adjustments in GPS. 2024, that number is outrageous. It is outrageous. The, the absolute zone, what they have to adjust is, is mind-boggling. Right? So we have an exponential uh, increase in the poles movement also. At the exact same time in 1990, our magnetosphere, right, the magnetic shielding around the Earth was at a specific rate. In, um, in keeping with the change that we see happening, the field is weakened enormously, and it will continue to weaken. It seems like he's keeping track with the movement of the north. Now, this has happened before. This means that animals are going to lose their migration habits. They will end up in the wrong places. We, we are undergoing this right now. Right now. Right? And it used to be thought that, uh, I remember somebody saying back in 2015, you know, if, if magnetic north and south change, no big deal. That was a general consensus. That's not the consensus now. Now they have a better understanding of what's taking place and what happened in times past. When the magnetic field becomes chaotic, which is what's happening now, and diminishes, and then it turns into spaghetti, and then it will realign itself. But in that realignment, it goes away almost totally. All the radiation from the sun penetrates the atmosphere. Now, at first, the atmosphere absorbs the heat from the sun. We see that happening right now. We're, we're undergoing this process right now, as we speak right now. Right? The atmosphere, even, even if the magnetosphere all of a sudden went away right now, it doesn't mean we'd burn up. It means that the atmosphere would absorb the radiation. It would become hotter and hotter. Right, you would have an increase in cloud coverage. An increase, 
I have a term for that. What, what, this, what we're seeing is a type of atmosphere compression with particulate, or particulate injection into the upper atmosphere with a diminishing magnetosphere. Boy, oh boy. It's going to get rough. This change in the poles magnetically causes a physical change in the planet, right? Plus, it causes great or, or bigger earthquakes. Now, you guys do understand that uh, the last, let's say about the last uh, eight big earthquakes have shifted the axis of the Earth. You guys do understand that, right? They thought that to be impossible. Um, but when um, the, the Fukushima earthquake hit, that shifted the uh, axis. Um, those two earthquakes in Haiti and Peru, that shifted, or Chile, that shifted the axis. So these big earthquakes are shifting the axis of the Earth physically. And they're going to cause this flipping of the poles magnetically of the Earth, right, to cause an even bigger wobble, which is going to affect the equator. Naturally, because if we start shifting, if our, if our poles continue to shift, the equator will realign itself with the sun, essentially. And the rotation of the earth is going to be chaotic as it wobbles, which means the equator will stretch in a way. You have to see it by graphic, right, so that you will understand, because it's going to be chaotic. It is said now that it's going to reach all the way to the Great Lakes, into portions of Canada. It won't maintain itself there. In other words, say for example, the equator goes through the Great Lakes one week, through Canada the next week, through the southern half of the USA the next week. And then of course it repeats that cycle. This is what we're getting into. So it's going to have a wide area that it will affect. It's not going to be, you know, clean. It's not going to be decent. It's not going to be the equator just moves up in this organized fashion. No, it's going to be a very chaotic time. That means our weather phenomena, it'll change even more. And actually, it means we have not uh, experienced the heavy changes. Not yet. We haven't. And of course, Earth is being affected this way. So are the other planets. Did you know that Mars, it too, is being affected in a big way? Magnetically, Jupiter is likewise. So is Neptune. So is Mercury. Right? So we have something. The, these effects is happening in our solar system. Um, we're finally being able to observe them. To to see the damages they're going to cause. It's just unfortunate. We live in a time when these things are happening right now. I mean, right now, right? This will cause, uh, you know, NASA's going to have to make some major changes in space and the plans about space. Most, have you guys noticed, uh, most of the rich are preoccupied with attempting to leave Earth. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed? There's a plan to occupy another type rapid, a rapid uh, deployment of a station will take place. And they're trying to make it where people can actually occupy space for about three years. Not go to another planet necessarily, but occupy space for about three, three to four years, I'll say. They will attempt to escape some of these rapid changes in the earth. Of course, we know that's not going to work out too well. In the Bible, it says that though you ascend up to the heavens, I'll pull you down, the Lord said. Right? So the Lord has, uh, you know, already dealt with that topic. If they go down to the center of the earth or in the earth, the Lord will get them, pull them up. If they ascend up to the, uh, you know, up to the heavens, he'll pull them down. So uh, they, they can't... Uh, they're not going to dodge what's coming. They're not. And we're extremely close. Very close. You hear stories like ice shells falling off. Let me ask you a question. Now, you have to look into who printed 
that story. Where it was published, does it serve an agenda? Or does it just bring up more controversy? What does it do? Is it really supporting global warming? Because nobody's talking about global warming, are they? Right? So why sensationalize a story like that? If in fact they're not saying the sea level is rising because of it. A crack more than 120 miles long on the east side of the Antarctic Peninsula finally breaking off, creating a spectacular iceberg weighing more than a trillion metric tons, roughly the size of Delaware. Is the Gulf Stream going to change or anything? Is somebody raising money behind the idea? And they underestimated it. They said, oh, listen, I'm going to show you how they work. <clears throat> Is it important? Most people say, no, that's not too important. Well, you miss the language in the articles. Listen to what I'm about to say. In most of the articles, they, the scientists, they never tell you who. Oh, just the scientists, the leading scientists. Whenever you hear that term, leading scientists, all of a sudden you think it's a qualified person. Right? You do. So they say the leading scientists or the top scientists were actually looking for this to happen months ago. It's late. We don't know what took it so long. Why would they put something like that in a story? To downplay it in your minds. Right? Imagine if a rock fell into the earth, right? And it destroyed a landmass. Nobody really was. And they said, well, you know, we, were, we thought that would come earlier. Let me tell you what that will do. It takes panic and it turns it into, oh, it's okay. The scientists knew about it. No danger. That buys them time to bring up some type of agenda to control Right? to rule over, to maneuver, to manipulate. Which means they're going to have to make a documentary concerning the polls. I I'm telling you what's about to happen. This is how they think. Right? So you'll see a documentary, a few policies, then they'll begin to maneuver people by that news. They downplayed it on purpose. So you would think it was no big deal in the hopes, because if you make, in this day and age, if you make something a big deal, everybody says, well, that's a distraction. I'm, uh, listen, they're using reverse psychology on you. You don't believe it? You just watch and see what comes out. Your children are going to learn of it, how horrible global warming is, but with a twist. See, it'll turn from human beings doing it to something else is changing. Dynamic changes that normally take place. They're going to call up one of the cycles and deny as much as they can because it has nothing to do with human beings. Right? I, I, because I still have to tell you, well, who's campaigning on Venus or Mars about that global warming? What about the temperature going up on Jupiter? Venus and Mars and the planets we can observe. Even a person with a, well, you can have certain optics here to read the temperature surface temperatures ride through space by way of light. Anyway, they'll start making documentaries of it because some policies are coming forward and they need that. What do the policies do? It's going to give, because listen, whenever people begin to get frustrated, you have to give the people a cause, something to jump on or something else to argue about. So you have to get some of the teammates off one team onto another team give them some type of credibility. They begin to fight for something else. They think the cause is theirs, but it's not. You made the cause up yourself, and so they begin to fight for it. Meanwhile, you work on the first thing they were fighting against to start passing things. That's how they work. They do it. No, no, it happens all the time. And people have become so prideful. They believe in the cause they're fighting for, but it's not their cause. It's somebody else's cause. And that somebody else made the cause up. People are becoming cold in heart. Right? So a natural disaster adds the human element to it again to draw people together. When that happens, all the other stink goes away. Right? It takes place every time. We get involved in something and guess what? All of a sudden it's no big deal. Don't be fooled by such things time is, is, you know what, things are going to catch people by surprise. Now, if they didn't tell anybody, I didn't see it printed, was the loss of life connected with this ice shelf breaking off.
I didn't see anything about that. You guys see anything about that? Any loss of life? You didn't see a thing printed. These are called post stories. When they come out a month later, they say, well, you know, the impact of that, there was a city over here which was totally devastated. Why? Because they're trying to sell you something to get your eyes off something. And if you're not careful, you're going to be steered right into it. But take note, though. Take note of something. You need to know. First of all, you need to know every time they come out with these definitive statements, the opposite happens. As though the Lord is saying, excuse me, because he knows we listen to them. We just recently stopped listening to them because alternative media just recently took off. Do you know that? And some of the alternative media is now mainstream alternative media. Thank God for the ones that aren't. But they change their story with a straight face. But I'm going to ask you, is it useless information? Most of them are warnings, forecast warnings. The populace will take it serious, but the general populace does not care. So do you really think you're going to get an ample warning from main... This is the funny part. Do you really think they're going to warn you five months in advance to prepare for something that will come in five months? No, they will not. They won't. Anything they know that's forming, why would they ever tell you? Why would they tell you that? They're not. First of all, they couldn't tell you everything, even if they knew it definitively. That will be against the law, the current laws. Why do I say that? Because it would allow you to see that technology is a lot further along than you thought it was. If they could forecast a month in advance, I mean with a lot of accuracy, they would be arrested. Something bad would happen. Funding would be lost. People would go to jail. So what do they do? They don't even care about the forecast they give now. It's become entertainment and a show. There are certain things you can't do anything about. You couldn't do anything about that ice shelf falling off. Nobody's going to be able to do anything about the reverse in the Earth's uh, rotation. Boy, that's going to be a day, isn't it? I know a lot of people look for a pole flip. Right? A lot of people look for that. I'm not sure if that's going to do that or not. But I am kind of sure. I'm somewhat sure within myself. This is just me. You don't have to believe it because I'm not telling you it's going to happen. But I do believe that the earth is about to change its rotation. Not sudden either. Not sudden at all. Slow, like a day is going to hang out there for four, five, six days. A burning sun. I just hope I'm not on the side of the sun because me and the sun don't get along when it's, you know, doing that thing. And when it reverses, the weather patterns reverse and everything else. But the moon won't. So because the moon won't reverse, guess what? Because it will take a little more time. Guess what happens? Through a simulation that was made. Do you not know this? I got I to gotta tell you this. Through a simulation, here's what would happen. If there was a gradual change in the Earth's rotation, here's what would happen throughout the simulation. Because of the sheer mass and force and weight involved, right? A small difference in the Earth's rotation what calls dust from everywhere through pressure great pressure rock pressing against rock shooting up into the atmosphere we would have a mouthful of dirt every single day and it would eventually blot out the sun and a big dust cloud would be around the earth when it just started to do it when things began to slow down we would have back-to-back -back small earthquakes but they said the days would remain the same because of a strange dynamic of, of, of something called gradual, that gradual stretching. The earth is not perfectly round, nor is it perfectly solid, right? So it would kind of get out of shape a little bit. It would. All over the place, get out of shape. Dust would be a factor thrown up into the atmosphere. At the same time, weather patterns would be messed up. Right? Internally, the reversal would start. Internally, not externally. If it began internally, magma would be churned to the top. Right? Not enough that it would be absolutely notable, but enough that magma would churn. And we would have greater volcanism. Right? As it begins to slow to a stopping point, to a rest point, that would be the point where the shielding 
would begin to pulse around the Earth. If the dynamo theory is correct, which they don't think it is now, because they found something else. You know, as we go, as we progress in life, technology gets better and better. As it began to reverse, we'd have no protection from the sun. Not all over the Earth. On certain sides. When that starts, we're going to have a bad dust problem. And a water event. Now, in the simulations, it says not when it first begins, right? But when it slows to a certain speed internally, the water begins to shift. The water begins to shift. When the water begins to shift, the coastlines reverse. That's when places start falling off on the shelves because subduction zones begin also begin to reverse. Can you imagine land always? Do you guys know what a subduction zone is? That's when one part of the earth is constantly going under another part of the earth. And then it melts and it goes in a big circle and comes back up the other side and it keeps doing the same thing. Imagine if that process reversed. What happens to a landmass that is going under another landmass? All of a sudden, the landmass over top starts being pushed faster over top of the other landmass. So what you see, if you put one hand over the other, and you lift one hand up, you have a rise of land like you couldn't believe. Right? Let me tell you what they observed. They witnessed a mountain range being formed. Not over millions of years either, but over four months. Walkable. Four months. Not millions of years, four months. They also witnessed rock, large rock shells just rising up in the course of two months, five stories tall. Now, if something can rise five stories, sheer pieces of rock straight up out of nowhere in five months, pushed up by what? Magma in conjunction with something in the heavens. I've said that for how many years? Seven years now. I didn't just make it up either. I didn't make it up. The blood is coming. I can almost see it in my mind's eye. Some of us walking outside and it starts to sprinkle. You know, nobody's paying attention. And then you look down on your arm and it's a substance. A substance falling on you everywhere. That in conjunction with the red dust. There will be a time when you go and wipe your windows all the time. And it's nothing but red stuff, like a pinkish red stuff. A residue, a consistent haze in the atmosphere. That's beginning already through volcanism. But I'm wondering, will we still become comfortable with these things?
Director of Planetary Science at NASA. You know, NASA works with the international science community to explore our solar system and beyond. You know, it's all about starting the process that could lead to an exciting result. It is not, however, the detection of a new planet. It's too early to say with certainty that there is a so-called Planet X out there. What we're really seeing is an early prediction based on modeling from limited observations. From limited observations. From limited observations. People have to really pay attention these days. No way! <gasps> That's great! We landed on the moon! The land? red not only by reason of thick smoke because it's going to start setting volcanoes off everywhere that that small subtle change will shift the land masses and when that happens we have magma underneath these land, ma land masses that magma is going to find a way out it's under high pressure it's looking for a way out uh, so we should see multiple eruptions but sustained eruptions not necessarily you know big devastating eruptions but think about 300 more volcanoes going off and they don't stop, something like that. Um, we'll start seeing things like that. Then, of course, the earthquakes will come intermittently with that, and they will be powerful, not, not small. But that's only the beginning, because then we'll have uh, you know, those pressure differences. Um, for example, if the pressure changes, like some of these high and low pressure systems, if the pressure of these storms continues to build, then it's a known fact that within a very short time we could see the oceans boil see the temperature could be for example if the ambient temperature is 97 degrees the oceans can actually boil with a small temperature change right they can actually boil uh, it's kind of like going from uh, the coastline of Carolina to, to Denver Colorado you're gonna have a different boiling point based on altitude because of pressure well the same thing with the pressure of the atmosphere if it changes your boiling point uh, changes also. So that's a boiling off of the oceans. That means no water for anybody. Uh, things like that will begin to happen. Let me give a scenario. If what was seen in South Africa is in fact part of the twin system, we're going to see an escalation in, in heat period underneath the earth and above the earth and in the earth. Then we're going to see a problem in the northern hemisphere with uh, water, ice melts, things of that nature. If that is a fact, if, if that is really a fact, they're going to have to cover up quite a few things like uh, strange particles coming in or, or drifting into the solar system. We're going to have a, you know, uh, to, um, uh, some sort of space dust issue here that will begin to build and it won't be Sahara dust. This will cause a sickness because it's a known fact that uh, viruses often come in with dust 
in the solar system now, not galactic cosmic rays and large, you know, heavy particles, but things that are being carried all over the solar system and indeed the universe. Also expect more more land shifts or crustal displacement. And the reason why is because you're dealing with tidal forces. When another object comes in proximity to us, the sun is going to be the first thing that that starts cutting up. It's going to be the first indicator something is wrong. When it has persistent activity that it's not supposed to have, right? It's, it, which means it's outside of its normal cycles, like it is right now. Then we have a problem. When it's uh, active, possibly on one side, you know, the sun still, you know, is rotating and all that. But when it's active on one specific side, that's by way of influence only. It's not some natural process when it only does something on one side. So watch for that. We're going to see those increases. That'll be verification that we're in trouble. And then next, Earth is going to have these, um, we're going to have these uh, dynamic changes in, for example, gravity, how electricity works. We're going to have interruptions in electricity. That's one of the biggest warnings right now that people are afraid of, not the public, but the other guys for themselves. They're, they're terrified because they're trying to mitigate uh, the total loss of electricity. So uh, things are starting to change. Some at first, but they'll continue, which means a lot of amateur astronomers are going to start picking subtleties up. But when that happens, you better believe they're going to put the something will happen to the internet because they don't want people to communicate such things just yet. Right? We'll interrupt everything they're trying to do. But people are going to see it with their own eyes, and when they do, I hope they don't fall apart because it's not you know it's not something fake. 